Hi there. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Renaissance Space Podcast. If you'd like to listen to any previous series of the Renaissance Space Podcast, you can find all episodes on our Buzzsprout webpage or wherever you get your podcasts from. In this week's episode of our EdTech Focus series, Margaret speaks to Joe Neill, the Trustwide English Lead, and Karen Bolan, the Assessment Data Manager for SchoolsWorks Academy Trust. Both guests discussed how EdTech solutions have provided a platform for staff across all schools in the Trust to acquire accurate and timely assessment data for all pupils. Joe discusses how EdTech solutions have enabled teachers in the classroom to acquire a comprehensive outline of each student's current growth rates with literacy. In contrast, Karen discusses the ease of data management and report distribution across all schools at trust level, thanks to their existing EdTech solutions. Remember, if you'd like to have your say on this episode, just pop onto Twitter, tweet your comments and include the hashtag, hashtag Renaissance Space in your tweet. This will allow you to join other educational professionals in discussing the podcast episode together. And as always, please subscribe, share and leave a comment on the episode. Enjoy! everybody and welcome to another podcast. I'm really pleased to be talking to Joe Neal and Karen Boland from Schools Works. Joe, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Uh, yes, I am Joe Neal. I'm um, one of the assistant heads at Downsborough Primary School and I'm also the um, trust-wide English lead for Schools Works. Busy man. Thank you, Joe. And Karen, over to you. Um, I'm Karen Boland and I'm the Assessment Data Manager for Schools Works Trust and previously I was Deputy Head at one of the Schools Works schools. Thank you Karen. So Schools Works is a multi-academy trust with eight primary schools now part of it and um, they are all using Star products so I'm really interested to hear about the experience that the schools from Karen's point of view and um, how the STAR assessment affects the teaching and learning, probably more from Joe's point of view. Um, I'm looking forward to a really interesting conversation. So Joe, um, post-COVID, Easter return, what does that sum up in your, or bring up in your mind when you hear those three phrases? Um, well, we, we, we returned um, on the beginning of March, wasn't it? Seems like a long time ago now. It was, I think, it was the eighth, wasn't it, that um, the, the children came back, and we had some discussions in the trust in the lead up to that about um, how soon do we assess, how soon do we use STAR, um, and in the end, the decision was to, to, to do it pretty early on, so that we would um, that we would probably within the first couple of weeks take get children to take a STAR test, and and that is exactly what we did, and. Um, and I think that that was the right thing to do because it meant that straight away we then had um, all of the the information that we get from STAR to know exactly how children have been affected by um, by that second period of, of school closures. Um, and and what we found at my school, and I'm sure Karen will be able to tell us that we found across the trust, was that it was similar to the first lockdown, that actually it was that reading held up really quite well um, on the whole there were certainly certain um, certain groups where it didn't but on the whole reading held up pretty well but actually maths there were there were some really significant gaps that, uh, that, that had emerged. Thank you Joe. Um, Karen I'm sure some of what Joe was saying will resonate with you. The the star testing I don't think you did star test during lockdown did you? No, we didn't. Um, children had access to all the books and were quizzing like mad, um, but we we didn't. A, we didn't have access, and B, I wouldn't have wanted to star test anyway. It was much better to do it as soon as they came back. Um, and from the trust perspective, that gave us a really good handle on which schools we might need to support a little bit more or to dig a little bit deeper. Whether as a trust we'd all dipped in maths. Um, whether the, how the reading was holding up. But equally, because we've done it for a while, we could look back at the same kind of results for the same kind of time in 2019 
and 2018 and see just how far they'd gone in comparison, which was a little bit um, of a surprise because although they dipped, they hadn't dipped quite as badly as it, it first looked. And the workload then for, for teachers um, to, to play that catch up, um, Joe, I don't know if that probably affects you more or gives you, you have a bit more insight on that, actually, actually being at the coalface in a school at the moment. In the in the sense of, of workload for, for for teachers in, in, in terms of using the star test post post that lockdown. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean what what star what star did is that it, it was able to to identify exactly what the children could do. Um, post that lockdown and what they couldn't do. So we used the, the instructional planning reports um, and we used them for our, um, to set interventions. And, and it meant that we were able to, to, to group the children into, um, in, into groups where those interventions could then, um, could then be targeted. We also, um, as a trust, began using the, the, the focus skills documents that, that Renaissance produced um, and using them alongside the, the instructional planning um, report was was great because um, because it meant that that actually those interventions could focus on what were those really key building blocks that that the children needed to to have um, and they maybe had missed out on because you know you know that when children have missed potentially you know five six months within within a calendar year you know you can't cover everything so it's about knowing what are the most important things to be. Um, to, to be covering so um, I think that in terms of teacher workload there's a temptation sometimes for teachers to think um, right I need to just cover it all I need to work double as hard to, to do everything and actually I think STAR was able to to, to really help focus our, our staff on exactly what were were the priorities and, and what they needed to, um, to to be focusing their time on. That's, that's great. And I'm really pleased to hear that the focus skills have been helpful on that because, you know, we did release those in an effort to try and help do exactly what you say, which is to pinpoint some of those elements that needed to be identified and, and to be exploited, really, to ensure you get the best. best uh, and also, Margaret, I'd add to that as well, that we, you know, the reason that, that the trust began using STAR was, was workload was at the centre of that anyway, because we... We, we wanted something where the, it would be quite sort of low stakes assessment and we didn't want staff to be having to mark papers. So that felt uh, as one of the reasons that, that, that we could do star tests so quickly after children returning was because um, we, we knew that, that there wouldn't be any workload for teachers, that, that actually they wouldn't be having to, to sit there and, and mark all these test papers, which we really didn't want them to be having to do after two months of, of having to, to do remote learning so um so i think it, it it felt like something that 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 we could do within the first couple of weeks of children coming back and actually the impact on children and the impact on um on, on teachers would on teacher workload would be quite low but the information we get from it would be um would, would be huge Karen, I know that um, you take great delight in analysing the data and, and looking and seeing what you can find out. And I, I know that um, one of the things you did do was to look at historic data, uh, bearing in mind that this year and last there, there were no SATs. I wondered if you could just um, talk just about that a little bit. Yeah, we produce um, at the end of each data drop, we produce a report for the board, um, which shows all schools star i mean usually you'll have teacher assessment and other things on it but at the moment it's mostly star because there isn't anything else um and that is very very useful as i've said before in terms of where they might want to ask a few questions or target a little bit of support but one of the reasons that that we can sell it i guess to star is that we know from our own research historically that the correlation between our star results at the end of the year and our SATS results for year two and year six particularly is extremely high. So therefore, we know that if star says 
this group of children are going to get around this percent, that they probably are. Um, and that's a great help both for predicting, again, where support might go, but also for getting people to, to use it. So it has that overarching importance as well as drilling down to each individual child can or can't do this. And having eight schools, um, you know, that probably has some challenges because some are bigger than others. Um, so using that detail. You know, we, we can pinpoint so we can compare pupil premium children or EAL children and that kind of thing. But on our reports, we also have the demographic of each school's year groups. So, for example, uh, we looked at one school and in year two, they looked as if their reading was no well it wasn't anywhere near as good as everybody else's but because we could look at the demographic we knew that in that school there were almost 50 percent eal children and that most of them had come into school with no english and therefore you kind of get that perspective and you're not going to go running into the school and saying what's going on because you already know and that insight is what makes the difference between good data and bad data really isn't it because it's giving a, a whole picture Joe, um, I know you're currently in, in a different school from where you originally were. I just wondered if you could give some insight into how that's working for you, that sort of granular detail that, that Karen's just uh, talked about. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Karen has explained that very well, that, that she produces the, 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 the overall numbers. Um, but, but as you say, you then need to look at, at the detail within the individual school, and that can be... The, the, the profile and the demographics of that school. It can be, you know, some in, in some of our schools, we've even got year groups that have relatively few children in. So you can, you can in those cases, you can really look at each child as, a, as an individual. So at my current school, we've only got 20 children in year six. So those percentages become less useful and I can actually see faces and think, oh, that's that child and that's the, the scaled score that, um, that, that they've got and that reflects them in that way or they could have done a bit better. So um, that's certainly how it, how it works in this trust that, that we have those, those overall figures that STAR gives us, which is, you know, and I sort of straddle the two in terms of my role across the trust, but also then working within one of the schools. Um, but it, it always, that those figures will be drilled down into and, and we'll actually look at the children behind the percentages. And that's what's happening at, at school level. And Karen, I know that you you span between, or you're sort of the link between um, the, the management of, of, of the trust and the teaching staff and the head teachers in the schools. And I just wondered the sort of relationship that, that you have to then balance because you're, you're trying to deliver but you're also there to support and use the data to ensure that the right messaging is getting into the schools. I just wondered if you could share some of that with us. Well, I think a lot of that is down to relationship. So prior to COVID, I would go into all the schools um, as often as I could um, because I was deputy at one of the schools for a long time. I already had a network of people that I knew quite well um, and we also offer training on our data system. Um, and we have you to help us with some of the training for AR and STAR. So once you've got the relationship, it's actually not too difficult. And because it's very open, all the heads get to see everybody else's data. And so there is just a conversation to be had. And it, well, to me, I don't know if you ask the staff, but it never feels judgmental. It usually feels support you know what can we do about this or that um and if there is a problem it's above my pay grade so I don't have to worry about it <laughs> I think that's a great a great comment but I think it's also true to say that someone in your position um is actually taking away some of the burden of that analyzing and detail seeking but what you're doing is pinpointing and, and developing other people's skill set to understand that the data is is not a, a stick to beat you with, but actually a, a safety net. Absolutely. Um, and we've also had to work quite hard to get people to understand and use the scaled score as opposed to the standardised score, which has been quite interesting. But I think we, we're kind of there now and people understand what 574 or whatever the number is might mean for, for that year group, whereas to begin with, it really was just a very random number um, and teachers weren't comfortable with it. 
but I, I'd like to think they are far more comfortable now and, and can have conversations around that, given that you're talking about children um, and all the different variables that that involves. Star reading is probably the world's best kept assessment secret. It helps the students because they can get on with the business of learning rather than being continually tested. The accuracy of the reports allow teachers instantly to get the information. The whole thing is mapped to the national curriculum and it works. Jo, um, how does that, that correlate with you um, in, in your role as, as a a lead across the trust but as your role at the moment as a deputy in a school um, understanding and ensuring that um, people feel comfortable in that space yeah well I, I would agree with Karen that, that Karen never uses data to as a stick to beat us with so when she says that that's definitely something that that she doesn't do it's it's incredibly supportive the the, the role that, that Karen takes but um, you know Karen and I were both there at the start of, of Schools Work's use of STAR when, when the Trust took the jump into, um, into using STAR for, for reading and maths. And, you know, I would absolutely um, agree with what Karen said about it's, it's taking time. It's taking time to, um, to, to educate the leadership in, in our schools to, to understand exactly what that data is showing us and what it isn't showing us. But I think that that we are, and, and, and certainly what Karen said about the scale of scores has, has, has been a challenge. Um, but, but I think we're, we're, we're at a point now where nobody feels that that, that data is, is judgmental. Nobody feels that, that they're going to be in trouble if they aren't hitting a certain number. It's, it, it, it is very supportive. And it's also incredibly useful because, because of the systems that Karen's put in place where the, every child in the trust takes a star test within um, within within the same time frame, we get really useful comparable data. Um, and 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 from my perspective, in in one of the schools, it means that that we desperately want to see how how we've done compared to to other schools and other cohorts in the other schools. And and there is that that sort of that challenge across the trust that that develops and that competitiveness that that I think is 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 helpful. That's definitely um, going to be there, isn't it? And, and as supportive and as, 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 as good as the relationships are, it, it's good to have a benchmark. It's good to have a starting place and it's good to have an objective. And, and, and scale scores are a great um, leveller in that respect because everybody knows what a 520 in English looks like. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a year four child with a scale score 520 or a year six child with a scale, scale score 520. Everybody knows that that is the scale school. Um, so it's interesting to hear that, you know, that language, that common language is, is now a comfortable common language and it's not something that people are having to sort of unravel and, and think about too hard. You mentioned instructional planning, Joe, um, a few minutes ago, and, and it's a relatively new um, addition to, to the STAR assessments. And I just wondered how, how you rolled that out or how, as an English lead, you were encouraging people to use that. Um, well, I mean, it, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's a report that's been there for for a, a year or two, hasn't it? It's, uh, but it's, it, it, I remember when it was added and being very excited about it. Um, and I mean, I think we we use it in the way that I think it's it's intended to be used in terms of you have the the, the, the class instructional planning um, report, which we would use for for interventions. So we would use it to we would group certain children together, and then we would be able to say to um, to to a teacher or a um, or, or somebody else that was working with a with a group that actually these are the key objectives that we need to be working on for this group of children um, and and the instructional planning reports are, are cross reference with the, the the focus skills so the focus skills are identified within them so so we would then we would highlight those and say and these are what what um, 
you know, if, if you have limited time with this intervention group, these are, are who you, you need to be focusing on. Um, and the same with teachers. So teachers have, uh, across the trust, have designated class catch-up time. And, and again, the instruction planning reports will be used to identify what, what should be worked on um, in, in, those, um, in those sessions. Um, at my school, we also used the instructional planning report to report to parents as well recently. So we used it to, to set targets on um, on on, uh, on termly reports that we sent to parents because I think that 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 at the moment what parents really need um, you know using using language like or their unexpected standard or that kind of thing is actually not particularly helpful at the moment. Whereas what we can say to parents is your child can do this and they can do this, but now they need to work on this, and, and that's what those instructional planning reports also allow us to do. Again, nice, nice link there to teacher workload. Reports can be such a time-consuming activity and is, is, an, is an also to-do job rather than one that you fit into your day-to-day. -day. So if it's supporting that, then, then that's good news too. Karen, from a trust perspective, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add in there. I mean, presumably costs and planning for additional resource will come out of um, your STAR assessment results. Yes, yeah, so as long as we've done the, the due diligence, if you like, the, the drilling down a little bit, just to make sure that the children had done the test in the required time and that they hadn't all done it in six minutes or, you know, which is what part of the conversation is after you've yes. got all the results in. So providing that's all been done, um, then the folk that run the money will be providing little bits more for a, perhaps a particular year group or or a particular school. And of course, the school SLT will also be using it, I'm assuming, yes. to allocate teacher, uh, teaching assistance or extra time. Um, but the other nice thing about it is, although we don't use accelerated maths, we can still use it um, with our, our own math system, um, which, we, which all the schools use. But one of our teachers has beautifully dovetailed all the focus skills in, into our, our own uh, math scheme so that you can see where where they match and as joe said they're all doing catch up and so if it doesn't quite match but they need to do it it fits in there so it still works yes i heard about that i'm i'm very keen to to speak to this lady because um it sounds fascinating that she can take a document from one company and then map in the benefit and the allocated skill set requirement in order to meet the needs of the, the STAR assessments. And it works. And if that's working across eight schools, that, that's wonderful. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to talking to her about that. Well, um, I would like, again, to thank you. Um, I'm thrilled that STAR is doing what it says on the tin. Um, we always hope it will. And they pay my salary, so I'm always going to assume that it does. But it's nice... Mm -hmm confirmation from from people that you know it's doing what it what it should do thank you for your insight thank you for your time and and thank you for your um very measured understanding of what's happening in your eight schools thanks margaret thank you bye Thanks for listening to the Assessment Solution episode of the Renaissance Space podcast. If you enjoyed the episode or have anything to say around the topic, get onto Twitter and use the hashtag, hashtag Renaissance Space to have your say. And as always, please subscribe to and share the podcast with your friends and colleagues. For updates on upcoming episodes of the Renaissance Space podcast, you can follow Margaret and me on Twitter. You can find our social media handles in the summary section of the episode. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of the Renaissance Space podcast, please check out the Education Joining the Dots podcast from our colleagues at GL Assessment. Thank you.